Hi, I've got Universal Analytics up on the screen here, and I've got the heat map view where you can see how users are visiting a website by day of week and hour of day. I've always liked that visualization, and there isn't a similar visualization in GA4. Also, there are some graphs in Universal Analytics that you can select our for as the granularity of the report. Only really a few, but I do miss that in GA4. So we're gonna look at how to recreate metrics by hour, both in explorations in GA4, but then dive a little deeper in Looker Studio. So the ones that will be creating are this line graph and then this cool heat map visualization, which is really kind of similar to the one we we're just looking at. So let's get started. Okay, first we're gonna look at reporting on sessions by hour in an exploration in GA4. So we'll go to explorations. I'm gonna create a new exploration and I'm gonna switch to a line chart then for now, I'm just going to bring in as a metric sessions. And then I'm going to drag this into values. So here's the cool thing you can do in explorations is when you're doing a line chart, you can switch the granularity to hour. And it's kind of a lot to take in at this scale. So we could just go and let's say pick the last seven days. I think will be more interesting. So now you see, so there are definitely limitations of what you can do with line charts in explorations, but as a fast way to get a feeling for how traffic is increasing or decreasing by time of day, I think this is super helpful. And especially if something just happened, like you did a press release, you got a lot of attention for some reason, this is a really quick way to just look and get a feeling for how much of an impact did it have. Now, the one critical caveat being that J4 does not process data real time. So, so this data in here, like it's going through yesterday, it's not even gonna let me pick today. So today is July 2nd and it's not even gonna let me pick that. So eh, that's a pretty big limitation. That's just a limitation of J4. Nonetheless, I think this is this is pretty handy. I have to mention that if you go to regular reports, you're probably already aware of this, but in regular reports, like in this case, I've gotten rid of the bar graph and I have this line chart, but I can't do anything with this. I mean, there's two things, well, there's several things I really don't like about this. One is that instead of just showing overall sessions, and it doesn't even give me that option, it shows sessions broken down by the top five of whatever dimension I have selected down here. And I can't, I can't do anything with it. I can't change the granularity. I don't have all, like in Universal Analytics, you had a lot of, of ways that you could compare one metric to another. You could change the granularity of the time frame. In any case, I, I just think this is really limited. So with that, let's go to Looker Studio, which is a lot less limited. So now I'm in Looker Studio. And first off, the dimensions that we're gonna play around with, and there's one I just wanna show you. So date is a dimension, presumably you're pretty familiar and comfortable with that. The dimension we're gonna talk about, so we're gonna use hour, and we're gonna do some tricky things. We're gonna use date and hour and hour. I'm not gonna use date, hour, and minute, but I just wanted to point out that that is a dimension that now exists in the Looker Studio J4 connector. And then there's day of week name and we're gonna try something out with that as well. So to get these dimensions, if they don't, if you don't see them in your GA4 connection, what you're gonna to need to do is go up to your data sources and click refresh fields. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of new fields that are showing up here. And the reason for that is that as of my recording this, Google recently just added a bunch of dimensions, including the these uh, hour and, and date plus hour dimensions. So if you don't see them, do that. 
Now, let's go ahead and create a timeline using date and hour. Okay, we're going to start by inserting a time series chart. And it's got pulling from my J4 data source. So what's interesting about this is, all right, so watch what happens if I change this to date and hour. It doesn't apparently do anything. Oh, and also I'm going to change this from views to sessions, since that's what we were looking at. Okay. What's funny is that I also have to go in here and change the type to date and hour. And now you can see it, uh, it is showing the day and the hour. It's a little hard to look at because we're looking at the last, uh, looks like 30 days. So what we could do is change this and maybe I'm just going to do, let's say last seven days, apply that. Now, of course, keep in mind that now it's not aligned with that date picker. The date picker is, in this case, dashboard wide. So I guess I could show you one of my, the tricks I like. If I have a tab where I don't want the date picker to be in place, then usually what I'll do is I'll just mask it. Looks like that's not quite the right color. Where is the right color? Right here. And so now, now you don't see the date picker, kind of sneaky, huh? Okay, now I want to just show you another kind of cool thing here. So again, just remember that you can you can change this here, but you also have to change the appearance of it. So you have to go in here and change the type to date and hour. I'm just going to do a little bit of style tweaking. So it says average sessions by hour at the top. So I'm just going to get rid of the legend. I don't, that's not particularly useful. I'm going to go change the background. Oh, that's the grid color. I don't want to do that. I want to do this. And then I'm going to change the background to gray. I personally like a little bit of contrast in the line, so I'm going to change that. Okay, then the thing I wanted to show you is adding a reference line. I just think this is super cool. So if you add a reference line, it defaults to a constant value, but what we can do is we can say metric, and I want the metric to be sessions and the average of sessions. And then this gives me a feeling for how a given date and hour compares to the overall average. The label right now, I don't love the way the label appears, and it's not very well, it isn't configurable, so um, that's too bad. But one thing that I can do is I can say average session, so I can change that part of it. And maybe I don't really want it quite that heavy, so I'll change it to that. So there you go. And, you know, you have all the power of, of configurability in doing graphs in Looker Studio, unlike graphs in J4, which are pretty limited. Explorations gives you a few more options, but still you have so many more things you can do. Like if I wanted to add another metric here, I could do it. I'm not gonna go into everything you can do with graphs in Looker Studio, but way more powerful. So now let's have a look at that cool heat map visualization. Okay, so now we are going to insert a pivot table. Drop this here. Make sure, so it's got our sample data. Now for row dimension, what do I want? I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose hour. And then for my column dimension, I'm going to choose day of week name. So then if we scroll down, what we want is we don't want the rows sorting by views. We want, actually want it sorting by hour ascending. And then you'll, you'll see something kind of weird happening here. So Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Thursday, Monday. So let's try sorting. So Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, what is it doing? It's actually sorting descending alphabetically. So that's not super helpful. So we can do something kind of tricky here, which is if we wanted to get it to sort the right way, we can switch this to date. And then I can change this to show the day of week. 
now it is sorting descending so we can change that to ascending so now it's sorting the way that we want i'm going to drag this down so i don't know just bear with me for a second i'm going to just do a little bit of formatting of this chart i'm going to change this to a pivot table with heat map see that's starting to get kind of cool and let's see what else we can close this i don't actually love that color so i'm going to change this to maybe let's try that how's that look yeah i like that and i'm going to do really pretty close so it starts at 12 a.m got the days of week progressing the way that we want i don't personally love this legend at the top so I do something a little bit sneaky. I'm going to, let's see, up here, I can change this. I'm gonna make that transparent. And then I'm gonna make the header font actually just be white. So then, yeah, because it says at top, sessions by time of day, day of week. So we don't really need that. So I really like this visualization, the heat map visualization in particular as a way of understanding how and when people are engaging with a website and what's actionable about that well i think it's it's really helpful for understanding user behavior for example if you see kind of spikes in the evening and then maybe a surge in activity around lunchtime that's pretty common with e-commerce for example that kind of helps you understand that people are probably doing research at night and then purchasing during the day which can be useful for example when you're looking at paid media data and maybe you're feeling like gee when i when i uh, reach people with ads in the evening it doesn't seem to convert but maybe it doesn't convert because they're more likely to wait until they're on their lunch break the next day which in my experience is actually pretty common behavior so that's one thing uh love to hear in the comments ways that you find this useful or ways you could improve on what i created thanks a ton for watching if you found this helpful please click the like button to let me know and check out to octobers.com for more videos blog posts and if you'd like help with j4 with looker studio with analytics projects love to help thanks again